Welcome back to The Extract. I'm Kyle Meyer, and next to me is the uh, great uh, William Fev. Ladies and gentlemen, William Fev's here with us today. It's, um, you're, you're not, you're not William Fev, are you? Yes, he is. <laughs> well, you made the wine. I mean, usually in Burgundy, yes. the guy that makes the wine, his name's on the bottle, right? Yes. Not me. Not you? <laughs> Okay, so this guy here, uh, Didier Seguier, uh, technical director of William Fev, um, I guess all he does is manage the vineyards and make the wine for one of the greatest Chardonnay producers in the entire world. Would you get in there or what? So I guess it's okay that we talk to you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I am okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. And what a treat it is uh, to have you here. One of the greatest Chardonnay yes. brains in the world <laughs> is sitting right here. Yes, perhaps. Yeah. The terroir is certainly the best in the world, but me, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you might help a little bit. A little bit. Okay, so you started at Fev in 1998, yes. right? Yes. And well, you, you were making Chardonnay before. Yes, with uh, Bouchard. With Bouchard, okay. Yeah. But you were working more in the Côte de Bonne. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. Did you have experience with Chablis before? Yes, because became... before Bouchard vinified some uh -huh. Chablis, mm -hmm. uh, some Chablis, Premier Cru and mm -hmm. Grand Cru, and uh, they, they bought, uh, they purchased grape uh, since a long time. And during six years, I vinified uh, Meursault, Puligny, and some Chablis. Yeah. But... I vinify Chablis with uh, another sensibility. Not the sensibility of Chablis, but the mm -hmm. sensibility of uh, Côte de Bonne. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same philosophy. Mm -hmm. When I arrived in, uh, in Chablis in 1998 with Joseph Henriot, when he purchased the estate, uh, we taste a lot of wine everywhere from Chablis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we taste the product of, of William. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, William used uh, before a lot of New York mm -hmm. and like Côte d'Or and like mm -hmm. Burgundy. And uh, for us, it was a good thing because we decided to change. Mm -hmm. In the first years, uh, uh, the, the barrels, because we don't want to make uh, Chardonnay, we want to make Chablis wine with a true expression of the terroir, yeah. minerality, finesse, and purity. Mm -hmm. In Chablis, we have a cumulogen soil. And Chablis is not the expression of Chardonnay, but the expression of this soil, Kim mm. Mm. Well, this is a very important point, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the soil in, in, in Meursault and Puligny and Chassain, it's quite different. Yes. Right? Yes. A, a lot of folks don't know that. What are the differences between the two soils? Uh, in Côte de Bonne, you have clay, marl, mm -hmm. and some shocks. Mm -hmm. In Chablis, we have clay, we have marl, but the most important thing is the Cumulgen. Cumulgen mm -hmm. is from Jurassic period, 150 million year old. At this time, the sea covers the country. Mm -hmm. And now we found in the soil, the clay, the marl, and oyster shell. Mm -hmm. Oyster shell called Exogira virgula. Mm -hmm. And uh, the expression of Chablis wine is the expression of the, the oyster shell. Mm -hmm. And Chablis is the only place in the world you can find Cumulgen and Chardonnay. Mm. And uh, it's our terroir, it's our identity. And New Oak, with the soils down in the Côte de Bonne, can kind of maybe support yes. these soils and kind of support this style of wine. But in Chablis, it can kind of pull away or mask the identity. Yes, often it, it destroys the identity. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we need to have oak, but old oak. Uh, at the domain of William Fev, we use some oak, but only old oak, mm -hmm. average four to five year old. Uh, I use oak only for exchange, for oxygen. Mm -hmm. Oxygen give a better complexity and a better expression of terroir because wine need oxygen sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to use neutral barrel. Yeah, neutral, only, like older only, barrels, yeah. 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 What was the first thing you noticed uh, in the vineyards after a couple of years? What were any major changes? That you needed to make in the vineyards at that point in time to, to increase the Chablis character? Uh, uh, our approach, our philosophy is definitely environment. And mm -hmm. we decide to stop to use chemical product. Mm -hmm. And today, 100% of the estate is organic, mm -hmm. but we are not certified. Mm -hmm. We don't want. Uh, and we started biodynamic viticulture for all the Grand Cru. 
since 2010. And we want to increase biodynamic for all of them, for all the, the Grand Cru and Premier Cru. Uh, since 10 years, with organic viticulture, minerality and acidity increase. And I think our wines have better energy today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with Chablis, it's a little more kind of less is more. The work is done in the vineyard, and then yes. in the cellar, it's just more yeah. about shepherding yeah. this wine as opposed to putting your mark on it. Yes, every time I said with uh, our customer, 80% of my job is in vineyard, mm -hmm. and 20% in the cellar. Uh, the most important thing is the uh, quality of the grapes. Yeah. If you don't have a good grapes, you can't make a good wine. Yeah. It's like Especially with Chablis, right? Yes. It's yes, a little yes. more naked or something. Yes, but it's... I think everywhere is the same. Yeah, yeah. If you have a terroir, the grapes is most important. Uh, it's like a chief in the kitchen. Yep. If you don't have a good product, you can't make a good dish. Yeah. More it's sauce, more sauce. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> and... Uh, for me, cellar is very simple. We can change a lot of things. And uh, we don't do batonnage. Uh, we, we keep the wine on lease, mm -hmm. doing all the maturing and uh, nothing. Mm. It's very simple. Yeah. But vineyard is most important. Vine yeah, yeah. yeah. But getting back to those vineyards, you know, you don't, you know, there's a lot of producers that put like uh, old vines or vieille vigne or something like that on the bottle. It's the quality here is so high, and, and, and folks, what you have to remember is, is that Fev right now is in the, in, in the top tier, the top hierarchy of, of Chablis producers' health, Chardonnay producers in the world. The wines are, are out of this world good. Now, what, what you guys don't make a big deal out of is, is the age of some of these vineyards. You're, yes. you're very fortunate to have some older vines in many yeah, of these plots, we, right? We are lucky, yes. In France, we don't have rules mm -hmm. on the label for vieille vigne. Mm -hmm. Everybody can put vieille vigne after uh, three years or five years. <laughs> All right, no right. problem. And uh, we have old vineyards because uh, majority of them are from William Fev during the 50s and 60s and from his father during 30s and 40s. And for example, the most important, the older vineyards on the estate from 36, mm. it's a Monte de Tonnerre mm. uh, and uh, planted by uh, William Fazer. Mm. And uh, our clos, we own four hectares, two and a half hectares are planted by William Fazer during the 40s. It's a true old vineyard yeah. with a deeper woods. Yeah. And we have here a true expression of Cambridge yeah. and very small yield every year. And uh, uh, small yield, give more concentration in, in, in wine and a better minerality because woods are very deep. Did the people, uh, did the people that have younger vines, do they, have they used a different clone in Chablis or do many of them just take the cuttings there? Uh, like, has, has the younger vines changed the character of Chablis and these older vines maybe give a better picture of what Chablis y was? Younger, younger clone can to change. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, for... Chablis or Petit Chablis is not a problem. For Premier mm. Cru or Grand Cru, it yeah. can be. Uh, we started uh, 15 years ago uh, to do a, a selection, mm -hmm. massal selection. Right, right. Or our, Taking cuttings from the same old vines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on our old vineyards like Les Clos. Mm -hmm. And today we have a, a baby collection mm. with uh, old uh, selection massal. And we can uh, use this collection for new plantation. Mm. Do you take a whole section out or, or do you replace the vines as they die? We, re we replant uh, every year each piece. Yes, yeah. each uh, vine mm. when it's dead with a massal selection. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we decide to uh, change a plot. Yeah and uh, we replant one plot in total. Yeah. But we own 130 different plots on the estate. Uh, and it's amazing. <laughs> For each premier cru or grand cru, we can have eight, 10 different plots. Yeah. We harvest, we vinify separately each plot, and we blend for each premier cru or grand cru just before bottling. Do you it's very important because each plot 
have different maturity yeah. and different, uh, uh, I don't know in English, but uh, uh, the, the vinification and the maturing it is not the same. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. when you blend different plots, you increase the quality. Yeah. Last question, because we're getting ready to wrap up. Uh, do you miss uh, making Pinot Noir? Sometimes, yes. I mean, because this, this is a dream. Yeah, Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah. This is a dream job. Yeah, yeah. But some days you sit there and go like, hmm, yeah. Claude de Pez. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, in past, I, uh, with Bouchard, I vinifier uh, many, yes, yeah. many Pinot Noir from Côte de Nuit, from Côte de Bonne. And uh, when I arrived in Chablis, uh, I think, yes, it's possible. Uh, Pinot Noir, uh, yeah, it's a problem. But now, no, because we have amazing uh, estate with mm. uh, uh, many different plots and every year is different and mm. uh, it's funny and uh, it's a perfect uh, uh, um, objective. Mm. And, but at home, yeah. I drink a lot of Pinot Noir. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at your day job, if your worst problem is having to pick between Clo and Vaudezir and Volorant, it's a pretty damn good day, DDA. Yes, 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 it's yeah. true. Congratulations. <laughs> I love your wines. You're one of the best winemakers on the freaking planet. Bless Thank you, you sir. Thank yeah, you. cheers.